This next storyteller is Ray Lopez. Ray is here to tell his story about his life realized. Please welcome Ray Lopez. <laughs> Good evening. So it's August 2015, and I'm standing in an empty apartment here in downtown San Antonio with nothing but the clothes in my suitcase. I have no furniture. I have no food. I don't even have anybody to talk to. And that's when it hits me. Uh, I've always shared my living space with somebody, even as an only child, whether it was my parents or wife and kids or roommates. For the first time at the age of 50, I'm living alone. And I ask myself, well, now what? And the answer to that question would take me on a journey that I never expected, as all of the institutions that I had given my life to kind of fell apart around me. You see, I've always had this kind of quirk about me. Uh, I never feel like I quite fit in. I can be in a room full of friendly faces like yours, but I always feel like there's something I'm missing that everybody else seems to get. And maybe that's what drew me as a college student to become part of an evangelical Christian community. And for more years than I was married, I gave everything that I am to that community. I went on mission trips. I volunteered at my church. I even left my job at USAA to go back to school. I went to seminary and got ordained, and I served on congregations that were huge, even a big multi-site megachurch here in San Antonio. But for all those decades that I served as a pastor, I still never felt like I quite fit in. Now, if you know anything about evangelical Christianity, they believe that they have the corner on truth, that their understanding of Christianity is absolutely correct to the exclusion of every other, not just Christian uh, denomination, but every other religion. They think they've got the corner on truth, and that never sat well with me, but I never felt comfortable bringing any of those questions up. And so during the time that I was going through my divorce and I'm having all these questions that I can't bring up, there are two defining moments in my life. The first one is a book that I read called Scary Close by a, an author named Donald Miller. And he talks about his struggle to maintain relationships and uh, how he had to learn to take off his mask and live authentically. And the second was listening to a podcast by a group of people called The Liturgists. Now, don't be fooled by the name. Even though they sound religious, they are a decidedly irreligious group of people who are having conversations and making safe spaces for people to express doubt and to have the kinds of conversations I didn't think anybody was having, certainly not within the evangelical community. And the first episode I listened to was called Black and White in America. And as I listened to them talk about racism, both subtle and not so subtle, I began to realize that I was an unwitting participant in a community and in a system of believing that marginalized not only people of color, but whole groups of people. The best way I can describe what was happening to me as I listened to these conversations was like when you're watching The Wizard of Oz and it goes from black and white to color. I began to understand that the binary black and white, this or that way of thinking is not how the world works. And so I'm going through, thank you. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm going through all of these uh, transitions in my thinking from racism to politics to sexuality and every other issue that you can imagine. And I'm doing a complete 180 from the way I used to think. And right around this time, the last church where I worked uh, was going through an upheaval. Now. They said it was a reorganization. It was an upheaval. <laughs> and it was brutal. They gave me two options. I could either stay and take a 25% pay cut, or I could walk away and get three months severance. Now, at first, in this 
desire to want to fit in, I decided I would stay. Even though I would effectively be making less money than I was 20 years earlier, fresh out of seminary, it was like staying in that toxic relationship because you think being alone would be worse. And then I remembered something Donald Miller wrote in Scary Close. He wrote about how the greatest regret of the dying is that they didn't live lives that were true to themselves instead of living lives other people expected them to. Thank you. And that's when I knew I needed to walk away. And I did. I did. I, I started to dismantle all of these old ways of thinking. And then there was another watershed event that we all know about, the presidential election of 2016. <laughs> and I watched in utter disbelief as all of these people that I had spent decades working with and doing life with so easily compromised the values that they said that they clung to so that they could have their guy in power. And that was the last straw for me. Now, in the years that followed and I continued to shift my ways of thinking, I've been able to create a new community of people who have gone through the same things that I've gone through. I'm back at USAA. Yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I'm in a relationship with a woman that just shows me every day what it means to love. And as I was getting ready to be here tonight, uh, it occurred to me that when I walked into my apartment in August of 2015, it was 30 years to the month that I had first waded into the waters of evangelicalism. And it was as though all of these institutions that I'd been a part of were conspiring to blow up at the same time so that I could go on this journey. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that all of those things went away at the same time so I could be where I am today. And I'll tell you now, I'm looking forward to what the next 30 years has for me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>